The distinctive towers of WPI's first two buildings have been enduring symbols of the simple but powerful idea that is the university's bedrock. Theory and practice. Knowledge and skilled art. Learning and doing. This guiding philosophy has remained the heart of the university as we have moved beyond the cradle of our founding to spread influence and impact across the world. And the world needs now, more than ever, WPI's innovators, educators, makers, and doers. And this community needs you to open more doors to opportunity for students, to provide more launch pads for graduate students and faculty, to create the environment required to solve the world's great problems, to support a community dedicated to innovation and inclusion. Beyond these towers are tomorrow's global problem solvers, innovators, and leaders. Beyond these towers is where a strong, innovative, inclusive, globally engaged WPI will make its mark on our 21st century world. Beyond these towers, our research and scholarly work are changing the world. Beyond these towers is a community energized and propelled by innovation and inclusion. Beyond these towers, is a world beset by challenges, but we are undaunted. Imagining and developing solutions to the toughest problems is in our DNA. It's how we use data to model a virus and help unlock the secrets of a pandemic. It's how we transcended Earth's atmosphere to make our moonshot possible. Now, again, with the two towers, ideal as our anchor, we are stepping beyond our sphere of comfort, beyond these storied towers to play an ever greater role in understanding and meeting the needs of a profoundly interconnected and interdependent planet. The journey begins now, be part of it. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lori Leshen, president of WPI, and it's my pleasure to welcome our alumni from around the world, as well as parents, students, faculty, staff, and friends to the global launch of Beyond These Towers, the campaign for WPI. Thank you for joining us for this momentous occasion. If the past year has shown us anything, it's that the world needs WPI's innovators, educators, makers, and doers. It needs people with the know-how and tenacity to take on the world's greatest problems. Tonight, you'll see inspiring stories about what we've created and what we do at this remarkable university, how we transform lives, the lives of our students and the lives of people in communities near and far who collaborate with our students and faculty on world-changing research and projects. Through these stories, you'll understand why this campaign to raise $500 million is essential to ensure our faculty, students, and alumni can expand their reach and make lasting positive change in the world. Later, you'll have the opportunity to meet some of tonight's speakers in roundtable rooms, visit expo booths, and learn more about this campaign. And you can earn points towards great WPI merch. But it's the stories that matter and the positive change we create. And I know that after tonight's event, you will feel so proud of WPI. I'm delighted to have a co-host with me this evening, George Oliver from the great WPI class of 1982. He's joined me from Milwaukee, where he's chairman and CEO of Johnson Controls. George is also an active WPI trustee and chair of our campaign executive committee. Hey, George, please tell us more about the campaign and your involvement. Thank you, Laurie, and welcome to our worldwide WPI community on this truly inspiring occasion. I would also like to thank the many alumni, parents, and friends, foundations, and corporations whose generous support 
has helped us reach this moment to publicly launch Beyond These Towers, the campaign for WPI. It's been an honor to serve my alma mater as a trustee and chair of the campaign executive committee. WPI faculty, graduate students, and undergraduates are developing such forward-thinking solutions to such difficult global problems, problems that impact all of us in the work we do as trustees and on this campaign is helping to ensure they can continue seeking those solutions and continue making an impact. That's what this campaign is really about. It's not about the dollars raised. It's about what those dollars will do for our faculty and students and what they will do for people all over the world. Wouldn't you agree, Laurie? That is so true, George. In fact, one of our key priorities for the campaign is support for our undergraduate and graduate students, the global problem solvers, innovators, and leaders of tomorrow. WPI has a long record of transforming the lives of our students, and through this campaign, we aim to make a WPI education accessible to even more talented and motivated students. Undergraduate scholarships and graduate fellowships are essential, as well as support for the student life programs that prepare our students to make a positive difference in the world while they're here at WPI and well after they graduate. Here are just a few of their stories. Over the past year and a half, I've been working on developing a partial hand prosthetic for a young woman from Texas who lost her thumb and her index finger in a car accident in 2019. She approached us because she was told that there were no commercially available options for her and that she would essentially just learn to live with this amputation. Now, a year and a half later, we have a semi-working device. She has a device that moves her index finger and moves her thumb and we're working on making it into something that she's gonna be able to wear every single day. I am so grateful that people donate to WPI. Seriously, so grateful. This project just would not have been able to happen without donations. And it's through the support and I guess the trust of donors that we're gonna do well with their money that we're able to accomplish projects like these and great things across the world and get WPI's name out there. St. Louis has a problem with um, a racially segregated city. Our mission or our solution was to try to bring the youth together and teach them about the details that are going around in their city and uh, find solutions to resolve it. At the time of us entering the course and picking the topic, there was a lot happening and I admire that WPI and the professors recognize that. Um, this was a big problem going on at the time. So honestly, it makes me feel very proud to be a part of a school like WPI that has uh, alumni, parents, friends, um, others that are giving resources to the school and giving us students opportunities to really take advantage of the university and use all of you know, the facilities, whether it be sports, um, computers, science labs. You know, it feels good to know that our school and the alumni and the uh, parents have our backs with this. They're here to support us um, any way they can. They're, I'm hoping that one day when uh, I graduate, I could be one of those people that could give back to the school that has given me so much. Beyond This Towers represents a community of hardworking students, you know, people that want to push each other to strive beyond these towers. My WPI education has definitely impacted me personally and professionally. There was so much learning that happened outside of the classroom as well with the many different extracurricular activities that WPI has to offer. Getting involved with organizations such as Student Government Association and the ballroom dance team really helped my confidence, really helped me find my voice and helped me get outside my comfort zone. Following WPI, I pursued a doctorate degree in pharmacy and became a pharmacist. 
And after that, went on to complete two years of residency training. So first at the University of North Carolina Medical Center, and then a specialty residency in the new field of clinical pharmacogenomics at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. Pharmacogenomics is the exciting new field of medicine that lies at the intersection of pharmacology and genomics and really helps us understand how our genes influence how we respond to medications. I also have the privilege of putting this information into clinical practice and to see patients in a clinic that I started at Brigham and Women's Hospital. So I'm the co-founder and lead clinical pharmacist of the Pharmacogenomics Clinic at Brigham and Women's. And there I work with a multidisciplinary team uh, with a medical geneticist and a genetic counselor to see patients, many of whom have had adverse responses to medications. The foundation was definitely laid at WPI in terms of um, the biochemistry instruction, the genetics instruction. It really just sparked my curiosity in the field in these new scientific discoveries. And I think with WPI's focus on putting theory into practice, it got me thinking about, well, how can we leverage these discoveries to advance human health and specifically within medicine and pharmacy. So when I got to pharmacy school, that's when I really could make that connection. And now I can bring that into clinical practice today. I owe my unique lens on the world to my ability to connect and to understand beyond the science. I learned how to go beyond the facts that were in the textbook, and I learned how to connect science to the real problems of the world, to the social issues, and to the solutions that require the ability to communicate. I was afforded the opportunities to travel abroad as part of my degrees. This is where I learned to connect the science to the social the theory with the practice. In 2012, I spent a term abroad in Namibia for my IQP as a Charles O. Thompson scholar. And due to the generosity of the donor, I was able to afford the chance to understand that the world was much bigger than the textbooks. Being my first ever experience out of the US for such a long period of time, I was immersed in a culture and a place that completely shifted my worldview. Through this initial spark, I became infatuated with the continent, the wildlife, the landscape, and the potential of how my degree could impact another region of the world in ways I never could have imagined. Later on in 2014, I traveled to Cameroon for my master's project, which focused again on a sustainable energy project in a rural region of the West African country. Both of these projects bridged the gap between science and social, which gave me the inspiration to combine my passion for art with my passion for science to create a career for myself that would have never been possible otherwise. And I have WPI and the project-based learning experience there to thank for that. The way that I look at the world, my worldview, comes from this project-based learning that I couldn't have gotten anywhere else but at WPI. It was the school of my choice and I, in fact I applied early admission and so I was very excited when I got in but then comes a financial realization of the amount of money it takes to go there. Um, I had help from my folks, uh, some, on, some scholarships from WPI, some outside scholarships. I had such a great education at WPI, I'd like to give other people the opportunity to have the same opportunity that I had and be able to give back financially to allow them to go there. So I hope that the scholarships that I am putting forward will enable him to do that. A lot of the things I learned technically at school, I've been able to draw on. And of course, the problem solving skills have positioned me to be able to have a very successful career in both engineering and management. I'm very happy that um, WPI now is focusing on underrepresented students and, and women. I am focusing my endowment uh, really on student scholarships for underrepresented and females at this point. I am hoping that we can find uh, and enable students to go to WPI who otherwise might not have that opportunity. I hope that they 
will be contributors on a global scale, and I believe they can be. I just hope that my donation is, is useful to students who can make an impact. So BPI has had a history of being beyond these towers, looking beyond the local needs into more global and universal needs. And I think this campaign is a perfect opportunity to position WPI to be the leaders in what's necessary now to, I hate to say it, save the planet and, um, and move forward. And uh, WPI will be putting out some very important people to be able to do this. Every time I see that story about our students developing a partial prosthetic robotic hand, I'm just blown away. They're helping a student at another university who is planning a career in helping others. It's incredible to see what WPI students are capable of before they even graduate. And then to see what alumni like Roseanne Gamal and Donald Boyd accomplish after they graduate is just so amazing. And it's donors like Gene Camp supporting students through scholarships and fellowships who help make it possible. Our goal with this campaign is to remove financial barriers so we can graduate more students who will find their passion here and then go on to change communities, organizations, and even the world for the better. Let's hear from two alumni now and where their WPI education has taken them beyond these towers. I love how the interdisciplinary nature, uh, whether it's robotics, whether it's other things that are great problems, uh, I mean, they're, they're problems that are facing people, humanity everywhere. And when we think about the challenges of the 21st century, that's the type of both education and preparing that we have to do on the upcoming workforce to be successful to solve these, these great challenges that we have. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, it, it might be dark and dreary, but I'm, I'm really optimistic that uh, we're on the right path and, and finding and forging the right students for the future. I am so excited that no student is left behind on projects now. Um, I didn't have the uh, financial backing in order to do a global project. I wish I had, um, but the opportunity to offer that to everyone I think is quite special. WPI was a transformative experience for me, and the more that I can allow other people to have that transformative experience is amazing. And so that's what we're trying to do. WPI gave and really started us out on a professional career, and the working in teams, learning across different disciplines, all of that was super important to the success that, that we've had. Uh, and so for, for us, it's an important aspect to give back, pay it forward. And so when I think about where WPI plays a role, uh, it completely is impact. And so for us to be able to help accelerate the goal of not just in central Massachusetts, but New England, the entire nation, and also in the world about where this notion of theory and practice come together, it, it, it almost is obvious that impact is a natural extension of that. Theory and practice goes hand in hand with impact, especially at a global level. The ability to actually make a change in a community is an amazing, amazing feeling. I am always impressed, but never surprised by what our alumni achieve with their WPI education. Thank you to our alumni speakers for inspiring us with your stories tonight. Whether it's meeting on campus during alumni weekend or at an alumni gathering around the world, I always love hearing about the experiences and perspectives of our alumni and the impact that their WPI education has had on their lives. And our alumni are everywhere. You are truly a global network and you play a key role in our global engagement. Our commitment to global engagement has deep roots and expansive ones. The first took hold in 1974 with the start of our Global Projects Program. Today, we have global project centers all over the world, and WPI is recognized and celebrated for our distinctive, hands-on project-based curriculum with a global focus. Now, through this campaign, we will realize a new model for a world-spanning, globally engaged university committed to translating knowledge into action to confront global problems. The key is our global school, connecting our students, faculty, and staff to the challenges and opportunities that lie beyond our campus.
My MQP in, it involves working with Sylvester Manor Educational Farm, which is kind of all about preserving and sharing the history of their property, which is located on Shelter Island in New York. And one of the stories that they were hoping to share is they have this 200 year old windmill, the Shelter Island windmill that's on their property. And right now they're in the process of renovating that windmill. So hopefully one day it can be used once again as a grist mill to kind of grind flour and make bread, which is what it was originally used for. Part of the project was designing an electromechanical system um, to kind of modernize the, the grist mills. Their goal was to hopefully make electricity on the farm. The other part of our project was to build um, and design a scale model of the windmill so that they could use it for educational purposes on the farm um, and kind of teach young children that visit the property um, all about the history of windmills and wind energy in general and how you can take wind and convert it to energy. It would really be amazing if um, one of those kids who visits the farm and sees our scale model and, and the uh, original windmill as well um, and just sees how cool wind energy is that maybe one day they go on to study engineering in school and eventually work in the sustainable energy field themselves. I think that would be awesome. Beyond These Towers means the things that you do at WPI have an opportunity to help those beyond the university. I was lucky enough to have an MQP, a project that worked directly with a, an outside organization, but there's so many other opportunities because of the project-based environment at WPI to contribute beyond the university. So the PASET program uh, stands for the Partnership for Applied Skills in Science, Engineering and Technology. And, and so PASET currently funded by the African government, the World Bank, the government of South Korea, and of course, supported by WPI. The African government puts money together into this fund to actually uh, achieve this goal. So what they do is to enable the training of a critical mass of PhD and postdoctoral candidates and also support uh, innovation and research. And so we are directly working to achieve the sustainable development uh, goals. And so as a scientist and also an engineer, I'm looking forward to a product, a product that I can actually affect the lives of people, because I've actually mentioned. I'm looking forward to a product that can actually affect my environment. The reason why I say environment, because our, our people actually, that they are directly or indirectly are connected to the environment. And so as a scholar from Africa and, 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 and also supported by the BPI project, uh, uh, the reality is that we can do much more than what we are doing at the moment. Without your funding, I might not be here at this time. Thanks for supporting WPI Global Funding. The project I did was trying to develop uh, an activated carbon water filter in Ghana. The master's program is focused on creating, uh, solving solutions using local resources. So uh, we used locally found coal and coconut husks to try to create this water filter and make a change in people's lives. So I grew up in Ethiopia and me and my sister always had a dream about giving back to our community. I remember as five years old, we would always say, we're gonna uh, adopt so many kids and we're gonna have a near like houses nearby to each other and like, you know, flourish together. But uh, as I grew up and I decided to become an engineer, I realized there's more ways to give back to our community. One way being as an engineer, I can go back and change uh, and help uh, underrepresented people, help developing countries. And I wanted to start from my own community.
generally I wanted to go back to Africa. I started my project in Namibia and then I went to Ghana. So Ghana was the first one that I did using my engineering background to try to help people. So it was very important to me to prove that my childhood dream can be infused into my career and make change in people's lives. From one thing that I've learned from my program and my time at the Program of Science and Technology for Innovation Global Development is it's not about pushing solutions onto people. It's about co-designing solutions with them because uh, who better knows the problem than the people themselves and what uh, they actually want to be implemented. So by listening to them and by being creative, you can make a change. And I think that's the one thing I have taken uh, away from my time at WPI. So when I think of on these towers, I think about the promise that I made as a freshman and sophomore, I always said I would like to give back to WPI and help make an impact. At this point, I think it's my chance to give back to the WPI community and it's my chance to help carve the path that other students are so passionate about. The Global School is already making an impact, bringing scholars to WPI to gain knowledge in specific areas to take back to their home countries in supporting our students in programs like the newly launched graduate program in science and technology for innovation and global development. It's incredible to see what was once a seed of an idea be realized on such a grand scale as a global school and to see it making a difference in the lives of people in communities around the world. It's also truly gratifying to have alumni like Jeremy and Liz Hitchcock believe in these initiatives and support them at leadership levels. We are so grateful. The proof of what we do at WPI is in our alumni and the impact that they make with their education. Let's hear from two more alumni about how WPI has enabled them to make a positive difference in the world. I was a physics major. There was a famous professor at the time named um, Dr. Heller. He was an old German guy, a very German old guy. And when I went over to ask him if I could become a physics major, he looked at me and he said, um, Mr. Carlson, Mr. Carlson, you, you want to be a physics major? You? And I, I wondered what that meant actually at the time. Um, it turned out to be a good thing. He was a tremendous teacher and um, he was one of my physics teachers. And um, I had a terrific experience in the physics department. and. Um, the fact that I got that background turned out to be really important given all the things that I've done in my career. It turned out to be fundamental. You know, I'm an innovator. <laughs> I spent my, my life in the tech world. So that, that was really fundamental um, for everything I've been able to accomplish. Value creation is uh, basically the science of impact. <laughs> it's, it's how people can uh, make a positive change to the world. And WPI right now is the only school in the world that's offering that to its students. And our goal is eventually to have all the students graduate with a certificate in value creation. The reason I came back to WPI is because, I mean, my company, we, we had to give these skills to all of our employees. What happened though is when people had these skills, they realized they really could change the world. And they did. They learned that when they, had these skills, they could start with a small team, identify a big important problem, and take on things like high definition television or a revolutionary educational curriculum we developed called Cornerstone Math, or things like Siri. Um, it was just amazing. And um, what inspired me is the impact it had on their lives. So I wanted to bring what we learned back to WPI, and over time, that combination of attributes, I think, defines the best students in the world today, and that's what we're hoping to achieve. When I talked about the major gift that we've decided to give to WPI with my wife, um, again, there was a very easy decision for us to decide to give it to WPI. Um, the great STEM education, the project-based curriculum, the, the global focus, uh, the ability to add value creation, uh, the definition of what makes for impact, uh, doing things that are meaningful for others. Um, all those things contributed to why we decided that WPI was the right place to make a major gift. The ability to work in teams and solve problems that matter to others, that's the unique skill that defines uh, the people, the best people in the world today. The 
WPI Alumni of Color Association was founded in the fall of 2020 after recent racial injustice instances across the United States. Our goal was to not only engage alumni, WPI alumni of color and ensure that we were connected to each other, but also ensure that students of color on campus had a resource to leverage from. Through our three pillars, philanthropy, professional development, and advocacy, we aim to not only uphold the university's commitment to making advancements in the realm of racial justice, but also ensuring that we're creating powerful, long-lasting connections uh, between alumni. When the Alumni of Color Association decided to launch the Deborah Jackson Endowment for Black Indigenous People of Color, we had a few things in mind. One of the main things was to ensure that there is a continuous source of income to create scholarships and grants for students of color to ensure that they could have an education throughout their time at WPI. We chose the name Doc Dr. Deborah Jackson as she is the inaugural Woman of Color member of the WPI Board of Trustees and she currently resides as the Dean of the WPI Business School. So she's a very important figure in the WPI community and we decided this would be the perfect area to not only honor her but ensure that we could have a legacy for students of color. When I think of Beyond These Towers, to me what really comes to mind is going beyond the WPI campus and bringing the ideas of theory and practice to everyone that you interact with, not only in the broader Worcester area, the New England area, but also, you know, the United States and the world as a whole. It's really important for me to give back to WPI because I believe without the WPI education, many things in my life would be different. And so if I can just contribute a little bit to ensure that people can have the opportunity to experience the things that I did, um, I'm always ready to give back. Giving is a compounding effect. You know, I know we've all taken these math classes so we know how interest works. Um, and the more that we're able to give, the more the school is able to grow that money and, you know, engage in broader endowments than just, you know, one specific thing. So no matter how you give, no matter how small it is, you can always make an impact. Just being able to give people the opportunity to have the same experiences that you enjoy um, is always a good feeling. Our alumni give us so many reasons to be proud. Thank you to tonight's alumni presenters for sharing their stories of transformation and instilling great pride in our worldwide WPI community. And what George said earlier is right. The proof of what we have created and what we do at WPI is in what our alumni achieve beyond our campus after they graduate. Many of our alumni are first inspired through research, either as undergraduate or graduate students, working alongside our world-class faculty on purpose-driven challenges. Our faculty and students at all levels are engaged in cutting-edge research across the university and across disciplines. They're supported by federal agencies, corporations, foundations, and individuals, and they work with a wide array of partners near and far. We are committed to revolutionizing STEM through distinctive and inclusive education projects and research. Today, WPI is positioned to advance to the next level of research excellence, and this campaign will help us get there. In fact, we're so committed to elevating WPI's research profile that we have included a separate research funding goal in our campaign. We're doing this for the first time, and that goal is $150 million in research funds. One of my biggest projects right now is looking at if we could create a self-powered ocean cleanup system. It has applicability beyond just being on a ship. We could have it at river mouths and prevent ocean, you know, prevent the plastic entering the ocean. We could have it at recycling facilities as an alternative way to recycle plastic. A hundred million dollars in support of research and scholarly work can do a lot more fellowships, having more students be able to get those fellowships, which really brings in, you know, the cream of the crop and student body potentially um, for our graduate programs. And also having fellowships that retain students. That money could easily help support students like myself who need to find funding for materials and experimental work that we're doing. One of the major ways that donor support has affected my work specifically is in the fact that my first year I was awarded the Presidential Fellowship, which 100% funded my first year of my PhD. It's been 
definitely a fabulous decision to come here to do my PhD. <laughs>My group specifically looks at, at minimizing waste, so a lot of additive manufacturing, looking at using less material, using less energy to generate materials or to generate parts and applications. Um, we look at, at repairing materials or repairing parts versus replacing parts. So repairing a part is going to be much more cost effective and energy efficient and sustainable than simply rep replacing a part every time it breaks or every time it's damaged. We're also able to provide research experience for both undergraduates as well as our graduate students. They're getting, again, the state-of-the-art equipment. They have, they have full access to it. This isn't lab scale, this is real. And we're, doing, we're making real parts, we're doing real research, and students have the first-hand experience. Having the Sagamore Road facility has just allowed us to grow as a research group. Um, specifically, you can see some of these instruments in the back are huge. With this facility, the Sagamore Road facility, we're able to actually have full-scale equipment. Philanthropic donations have really helped us not only build this space and create this space for us, but also give us the, the scholarship to get these great students, right? Students are one of my favorite parts of this university. They're part of the WPI experience and they are really what drives this research. Faculty, we have the ideas, but the students are often the ones doing the research. So enabling students of all walks of life, the option, the opportunity to come to WPI has been huge. One of my favorite things about WPI is the dual mission of training and furthering the scientific endeavor. I love that duality. Both of those things are so important to me and to be able to, to really tie them to, to those two things together and be able to use our pursuit of science to, to also train the next generation of scientists and engineers is a wonderful thing. We just got this grant from NIH and I got this together with Professor Pam Weathers at WPI and uh, Professor Josh Kellogg at Penn State. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to identify new compounds that could potentially be developed into drugs to treat tuberculosis. So having this funding is gonna help us because now we can pursue this project full on using state-of-the-art techniques that we need to really understand what's going on here and figure out what these compounds are and figure out if they can be used or developed into new drugs for TB. This grant also funds students here at WPI and my collaborators, students at Penn State, and it's funding a postdoc, a postdoctoral scholar who is working in my lab I'm really grateful to the donor funding that makes it possible for us to bring in the students and trainees that we bring in. I think diversity is really important. It's important everywhere. It's especially important, I think, in the sciences where we need a diversity of opinion and viewpoints. And I know that donor funding is a big part of what helps us to bring in diversity of students, whether it's at the undergraduate level or the PhD level. Going beyond these towers means increasing, improving the diversity of the students and the faculty and staff that we can recruit. Because I think that, that increasing the diversity on campus is one of the most important things we can do to increase the impact of what we do, um, both at the level of teaching, but especially at the level of training and mentorship. In our NSF Industry University Cooperative Research Center entitled Center for Advanced Research in Drying, CARD, we are working on three innovative drying technologies where we are bringing new novel concepts to make drying processes very energy efficient. We believe when we combine these three technologies with innovative sensor technologies and artificial intelligence algorithms that my colleagues are working on, will be able to reduce the energy consumption of drying processes by greater than 35%. Note that the energy consumption drying processes in the United States is about 1.5% of the total energy used in the country. The impact of this on the carbon footprint is huge in the United States. And if you think globally, it's extremely large. Sustainability is the key for our project. The $4 million funding that we received from DOE plus the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center, the outcome of that is going to be the state-of-the-art testbed at WPI 
in our Sagamore building of campus. This smart dryer test bed that will be available to all U.S. manufacturing industries, we will run their current and new products in our smart test bed and will give them basically the formula so they can go back and make better products as well as with the reduced energy consumption. We are very excited about this smart test bed. It's going to be putting WPI not only on the US map, but also globally. I just can't see anything better than investing in research at WPI, to be honest. For me, research and education go side by side. In less than 10 years from now, I think that WPI name will be much more easily recognizable globally through the impactful education that we are delivering the IQPs, MQPs, and others. The meaningful research that we are doing has impacted people's lives. In every direction, I see WPI to favorably grow and impact our local society, our country, and beyond. Solving the biggest, most difficult problems is what we do at WPI. It's part of who we are. It started way back when, with Robert Goddard finding a way to launch us into space. And it has continued through the decades, right up to today, as you can see through these stories. Groundbreaking solutions to some of the world's toughest problems are being developed at WPI right now. Kirk Carlson understands that. And that's why he has stepped forward to support the work of WPI's faculty and students with his generous gift focused on value creation. One thing we know is that to successfully address challenges like a global pandemic requires diverse backgrounds, voices, and experiences. Organizations that know this place a premium on diversity, and WPI is no different. Through this campaign, WPI is redoubling its efforts to prepare strategic thinkers and build an inclusive, supportive, and welcoming community. Our aim is to create a campus community where prospective and current students, faculty, and staff see themselves, where everyone feels a strong sense of belonging and has opportunities to achieve their full potential. We're rolling a breakfast food truck around Worcester and specifically the WPI campus to one, give people you know nutritious and great tasting breakfast, but as well as again to support um, addressing food insecurity in the city of Worcester. So as an engineer, you know it definitely takes a lot of um, thinking and planning out of how um, we're going to be doing this and making it more and more sustainable. But being a very new startup, our plan really is to operate in two main um, two main functions. As a benefit corporation, we operate for profit and nonprofit, going out and setting up and having our food check like um, in various spots throughout the city to you know support our customers, but then turning around with our generated revenue and then having our community breakfast event series. And that's um, and that's a consistent way that we are um, going out in the community um, once or twice a month or um, you know more consistently as the business grows. And at these community breakfasts, this is where we invite people from the community or we are going to places in the community like soup kitchens, homeless shelters, and even just um, areas where food insecurity is you know, prevalent or rampant in the city. Well, I came in the WPI um, you know, choosing to do a computer science degree and I'm still pursuing it with my master's. And I still have always been, been very passionate about STEM and you know, specifically computer science and technology and just knowing that it's all basically interconnected and that you know my computer science degree can help me um, support food insecurity and that it actually is and, continue, and will continue to because actually in my master's, my thesis is to you know, use machine learning to help map out food insecurity. So again, like computer science is something that always is, you know, sticks with me and is something that uses um, and the skills I've learned you know, in my classes and continue to learn helps me continue to you know, support the mission that my business has and my own personal goals. Food insecurity is definitely like an extremely prevalent issue that I've been passionate about solving. And you know, just thinking about how can you spend your time meaningfully and what, you know, what is your greater um, purpose. It's not, you know, it's not just about profits or anything. It's about um, how are we supporting the community. So just hearing how we can do that and getting community feedback and community engagement 
is what is what I really love and you know continue to strive for. The goal of RAMP is to empower and support women in STEM by bringing them together to work on a research at WPI that's, lead, uh, that's led by a graduate student. So the end goal is to, first of all, to bring women who, to work together on a research project and to have this mindset of women helping other women, especially the high school students who so they do not necessarily have exposure to STEM. We are forming the next generation of scientists who are aware of the impact of empowering each other, especially the marginalized people. So whenever they will go beyond those programs uh, as engineers, they will raise such awareness and that would be very helpful for them to create more inclusive communities beyond the, the program because they know the impact just the way I knew, I learned that I was helped um, by other women and other people like me. They know that um, empowering each other is very powerful. I also know that the research or the scientist I am today was the product of other, like, like other people who've helped me or shared their experience with me or encouraged me. So when I found the call for RAMP, it sounded to me like that was the right opportunity to help and also to give back. The only thing that any student needs to jump into my line of work and my line of research is the desire to to be involved and to and to learn things. You can learn to do anything that you want to do. You can be any type of human being that you want to be. The connection to the creative potential is really one of the primary motivating factors for me and the type of work that I do. When somebody gives us money and says go for it, you know, this money is is for you to to pursue excellence and um, it, it's very empowering and it's empowering for me as a as an artist and as a as a professor um, and I could just only imagine what it's like for a 19 year old a 20 year old to to feel like wow we've got this safe place you know with with these faculty members and these staff like we really can pursue all sorts of things here. WPI is a special place and it is the type of place that I believe encourages and facilitates people to experiment and try different things out and if it works then great and if it doesn't work well, kind of also great you, you learn something in the process whatever it takes for you to continue to be enthusiastic about trying things I want to help facilitate that what we're trying to do here at WPI is teach students that it's okay to pursue things and to care about things and to uh, to encounter failures and to overcome those failures. That's just part of the, the terrain. So if students can walk away and know that, that that's just part of life and that's part of what it takes to, to be a success, then we've succeeded. And I think having been here for nine years, hearing other faculty members speak about that, learning about the IQP and what it takes for students to get involved with these projects that don't really have clear-cut defined objectives and you know we don't really know what the outcome is going to be. That's what it takes to, to succeed in life, to be able to say I've encountered difficult things before, this is a difficult situation that I'm facing now, we're going to find a way through it. I am so proud of our community and so grateful to our donors who are helping us create a campus where everyone feels a strong sense of belonging and has the opportunities to achieve their full potential. If you're still wondering why this campaign and why now, I ask you just to think back over the past year and a half or so. We saw whole societies shuttered and so many lives lost through a global pandemic. And the ripple effects have been profound and lasting. If ever the world needs WPI's innovators, educators, makers and doers, it's now. If ever the world needs leaders with the know-how and tenacity to work across disciplinary, cultural and geographic boundaries to take on the world's greatest and most consequential problems, it's now. If ever the world needs a university like WPI committed to transforming lives 
turning knowledge into action to confront global challenges and revolutionizing STEM through distinctive and inclusive education projects and research, it's now. You're exactly right, Laurie, but we can't do it alone. Beyond these towers, the campaign for WPI is about the entire worldwide WPI community of alumni, parents, friends, and corporate and foundation partners rallying to support this university. We want to see the involvement from all of our students, faculty, and staff. WPI needs your support to provide a life-changing education for smart, motivated students, to prepare them for the problems they will be facing, and to support our faculty in the research they are pursuing and the students they are educating. Whenever we embark on an initiative like this, I can't help but think of that wise observation from WPI's centennial history, Two Towers, that WPI has endured and prospered because by some strange and wonderful supply, there has always been enough people who cared. Thank you, George. And thank you to all of the alumni, donors, students, and faculty who shared their inspiring stories with us tonight. And thanks to all of you for coming together for this very special night and for all you do for WPI. We are on this journey together and we need your help. I really hope you'll join us. Now you've seen how this campaign is about providing the resources, facilities, and equipment our students and faculty need to expand and deepen WPI's positive impact on the world. Many alumni, parents, and friends have stepped forward to lead this campaign with their support. To achieve our ambitious goals, we need champions throughout the WPI community to come forward now. Please stay and engage with tonight's storytellers. Join roundtable discussions with some of the speakers and meet others in the lounges. Visit the expo booths to learn more about Beyond These Towers and its impact on WPI. Importantly, consider joining our journey to tomorrow's university and a brighter world. Together, there's so much we can achieve.